Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Mind Travel. If you guys were on, uh, we, were, we tried to do a live chat and we had some technical difficulties. So what we're going to do is we're going to do everything here on YouTube and then upload it. You'll be able to ask questions and uh, I'll answer them in the description box. So we're really lucky today. We have uh, somebody, a very special guest on our show, uh, Juliana Yernekian the president of Karas Winery, one of the biggest uh, and most important wineries in Armenia. So thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So can you, first of all, a lot of people even ask us, where, where, where is Armenia? And, does, uh, and when they think about winemaking, they don't connect Armenia and wine. Can you describe where it is and maybe some of the history of Armenian winemaking? Of course. So... Um... Armenia is in the Caucasus. Uh, it's right next to Turkey and Azerbaijan, Iran, and Georgia. Um, so um, it's right in the Middle East. Um, Armenia was part of the Soviet Union. Uh, Soviet Union. So when the Soviet Union fell, uh, there were a lot of the um, of the traditions that were that came from the Soviet times. Uh, one of those was the brandy making, no? the distillation. So people in Armenia, even though the, the culture is really, really ancient, like the first evidence of viticulture was found in Armenia more than 6,000 years ago. So it's really, really ancient, but it was lost in times, especially during the Soviet times. So when we started uh, this project, my family and me, uh, well, it was my great uncle who started, Eduardo Ornikian, he founded the winery in 2002. Um, well, in 2002, we started planting and preparing the land to plant and everything. So when he started, nobody was making wine in Armenia, or at least nobody was making wine in the, the, the type of wine that we, we know as wine. No? So, yes. of course, there were people like fermenting grapes, but nobody was making wine that was really um, interesting to share or like it was not part of the culture in Armenia. So when we launched our first wine in 2010, uh, it was sort of a revolution in Armenia and we kind of like shifted the story of, of the wine story and the wine culture in Armenia and we really gave the example that wine making was something that was really possible and that was, that was something that could really happen in Armenia and luckily today while well, you've been there uh, luckily today there are a lot of different well a few and and but I think there are lots like around 15, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Wineries making great wines, all with different characteristics in different parts of Armenia. Um, well, our Skaras, is, it's in the Ararat Valley. And that's in the west of Armenia, right yeah. in the border with Turkey. So it's a very, very special place. Um, volcanic soil, very high, uh, ab above 1,100 meters above sea level. So really, really high. And, um, well, uh, I don't know in which season you were there. I think it was summer, right? It was actually fall. We, you were the first winery in Armenia we visited back when actually when we launched our wine careers. And we didn't meet you yet. I don't wow. think you were in Armenia. And obviously, Karas was not uh, accepting visitors or Eno tourists or just normal tourism. It was just for the trade. And I have to say that we were pretty darn impressed. I mean, it's a 2,300 hectare estate and it took a, a lot of work because you have just, you had humongous stones. It's just all rock, really, right? Yeah, it is so, so rocky and so like the soil is so hard and, and it took us a lot of time to really prepare the place to, to grow the vines and to learn about the place and to achieve the results that we wanted. So of course, wine making uh, it takes a lot of time and it requires a lot of patience but it also a lot of like really paying attention to what's, what's going on in that place and getting to know it so it took us from 2002 that we bought the line the land uh, we we had our first wine in the market in 2010 so it took us a little bit of time and of course at that time at the beginning we, we were not um uh, allowing any tourism or anything because we were just like really concentrated in 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 the winemaking and in in like starting the project so 
So you are very, you are very lucky. <laughs> yes, we are. We were lucky. Let's, let's actually, let's get into some of the wines that we're actually tasting together, which is kind of cool. Sure. we can share this glass here. Uh, you just released this new line here, Tale of Two, uh, Tale of Two Mountains, kind of. What's the story behind uh, these new labels? Yeah, so the wine is called A Tale of Two Mountains. That's, um, I don't know if you can see there. Yes, you can see. Um, so um, one of the greatest symbol of Armenian culture and their Armenians is the Mount Ararat. Um, that's a mountain that has two peaks. That's why we say two mountains, but it's actually one mountain with two peaks. Um, so, and this mountain has, has been always been uh, the, like the symbol of Armenian story and Armenian community. And every Armenian has a story with, with uh, like involves the Mount Ararat and everyone that goes there, you can really feel the, like the energy and the, um, the importance of that mountain. No? Um, for those that haven't been to Armenia, like I, the Yerevan, the, um, the capital city, it's in a valley. And that valley like looks, uh, to the Mount Ararat and in our vineyard we we are in the Ararat Valley so we are very close to a mountain we are like right in the Piemont <laughs> yeah you can see how beautiful the mountain that's is a great right there picture. that's like so actually... you can see yeah you can see the Ararat from everywhere and everyone has a story and and we we like to think that even the mountain has a story of us, no? Of our stories, of our history, of our romances, of our... So this wine is about that, of, about our history and about, about connecting with that, with that history and with that, um, like, with our roots, no? So let's get, let's get the first one. You, it's a blend of Kangoon and Chenin Blanc, right? Kangoon is one of, one of the white varieties of Armenia, correct? Yeah, that's right. So, sorry, I had it open, and um, so uh, this this wine, um, it's uh, we wanted to to really show this like international also aspect of us as a family and as a as a company. So, we, our idea was to blend something that is very Armenian with something that is more international that can also like. Uh, behave well in the blend, no? So I think that Kangoon, it's a very interesting grape. It's mainly used for distillation in Armenia. So it's a typical uh, white grape that is used for brandy, for Armenian brandy. And um, it has a lot of texture. It's very like oily and greasy. So it's, it's really nice in the mouth. Um, in the nose, it's it's much more like it's very fruity a little bit um it has less something like honey or something sweet but it's not that expressive as other other white grapes so i think that in the blend with the chenin like you can really taste the the typicity of the kangoon and with something more interesting as something also very interesting as the chenin if i don't know what you think if you have to compare this grape with an international grape which one would you compare it to is it similar to a certain more famous wine grape? Um, I think there's there's one in Croatia where you are that it's a little bit similar. I don't remember the name, probably you do. Uh, but I think that like our terroir, um, our place in, in Armavir, in, in Ararat Valley, it's, well, the soil is volcanic and it's really mineral. And I think that in this wine, for example, you can really feel that um, character it's a little bit salty i don't know if you can taste yeah. it but that's something that i really really like in wines like that like chalky and taste like salty finish no like savory yeah i mean i like that uh, kangoon was used for for people who don't know was used for the famous armenian brandy it was one of the grapes and i was mm -hmm. uh it was cool to see that you're highlighting some Armenian wine grapes. We talked about this on the live stream chat that kind of uh, went out with technical difficulties. Is I always felt we always felt like Karas wines were good, but you were dependent heavily on international varieties in the beginning, and not Armenian varieties. Can you describe uh, that journey for for Karas and, and why 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 that so, one? Yeah. So as um like the cradle of viticulture is it's located in armenia now so like the 
the birth of winemaking was ha like happened in Armenia. So when we started, we, we wanted to sort of like bring back home all of these like lost childs around the world back home to Armenia. So we planted all different kinds of grapes from Italian grapes to French grapes to Argentinian Malbec, for example, and of course the Armenian grapes also. And the Armenians, the Armenian grapes were the ones that we knew the least of, no? Because there was not very, a lot of like development in, in research or, or in, in like studies um, about the Armenian grapes. Um, so we did a lot of research in this, these 10 years that, that we've been making wine there. And we just now re are really like confident on the kind of, of wine that we are able to do with, the, with our own grapes, and we didn't we didn't want to to buy grapes from anyone anyone else because we wanted to do this our own research and also also for the industry of Armenia, of course. No, it's not only about us, but it's also to like to share this information and to share share our research. We've been studying different clones and in different like the behavior of these clones in different parts of our of our state, which, which is quite heterogeneous when it comes to, to the soil. So now, some years later, it took us more time than I would have wanted to probably, but um, it's like that. I mean, it takes a lot of time. Like every year you have the opportunity of, of making a new wine, but then you have to wait for the other one. So, um, so now we are really confident in the, in the wines that we are, we are getting to to do with with Areni, which is a red grape from Armenia, like the one of the most important. With Sireni, which is another great great uh, red variety, and also with Kangun, of course. And I don't want to to confuse anyone with like telling all these names, but we are doing research with a lot of different grapes and different clones of these grapes. So, well, let's let's we have we have a couple of questions prepared for you. To ask we can just. I would like to know, so, okay, let's not confuse the audience with too many of the Armenian names, but mm -hmm. perhaps you can give us a number of the, the number of Armenian varieties that you have identified as high potential. Okay, so Armenian, there, there have been like discoveries of over 150 different grapes and different varieties in Armenia so far. So there are a lot of different ones. But the ones that I really, really like are, of course, Areni, which is the red, uh, red grape. It's similar to Pinot Noir or something like that. Um, Sireni, which is also a red grape, and it's original from Karabakh area. So that's like more in the, um, like in the east of Armenia. And Kangun for the whites. And also there's another one for whites that I really like. Um, that it's called, uh, now I, I lost the name. Boskihat, Boskihat. Boskihat, yes, thank you. So Boskihat I really like, but I think that with those four, of course we are doing research more and we are also always like open to new discoveries and to test, testing new, new varieties. But I think that those four are really, really, really good and have, have a lot of potential. And also, well, see, yeah, it's mainly known as like a French grape, but the origin is that it comes from that area, not specifically from Armenia, but I mean from what Armenia was in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's from that area. And I find that it really like, it really found a new home in, in Armenia. Like the results that we have with Syrah are amazing. Actually, we use it a lot for our blends and- You have a varietal really, one now. You have a, a yes, varietal Yes, we do. And it's really good, like very, it has a lot of character um, and really different from other ones, I think. So. And what about, what about the, the current demand for Armenian wine? Do you export much to other countries? Yes, luckily um, there's a lot of expectation and there's, there are a lot of people like that really, really oh. like the Armenian Armenian wines. And so we are exporting mainly to Russia, of course, which is very near and to United States and all over Europe and also a little bit in Asia, like China and Japan. But it's mainly Russia and United States and then Europe when it comes to quantities. 
and yeah it's it's been really like a trip no like when when we started uh, well we me and my family we also have a, we're making wines in argentina where we are now and um in argentina like when when i started like traveling telling about the wines everyone was like oh tell me about argentina like nobody was interesting about armenia and now it's like the other way around like everyone is like i don't care about argentina tell me about armenia so yeah it's funny like um i think that um armenia is like a, the big one big surprise in the wine industry and people that are really uh, like eager to know something new and to taste new new wines um armenia is something that like delivers a lot um it's really exciting and the wines are really really good and the history of course like the history is so rich um that it, it becomes very exciting for the for the consumer so, no? juliana it's such a privilege to talk to you because you have experience in both um in argentina and also in armenia when you compare these two countries what are the different challenges that you see in these two countries and similarities when it comes to promoting the wine, marketing the wine? So um, I think that um, making wine anywhere in the world, it's it, like it requires a lot of passion. It requires a lot of patience and like the, the things that, that you need are the same everywhere you go. But when it comes to to Armenia and to Argentina, like, of course, the places are very different. Um, Ar Armenia, what is, I think, the most exciting about thing about Armenia is that it's so new, uh, but at the same time, so ancient. So it's like, it's very exciting to be making wines there because they're like, the history is so, so long and so rich, but at the same time, so new because yeah. we're making wine only for like 10 years. So um, I think that that like the com the combination of of new world and a ancient world it's very interesting when I go to to different places to tell about the wine or or to uh, like to give a tasting or winemakers dinner or whatever like the to be able to tell the story of these two places that are so extreme no like the beginning of the wine world and the end of the world in Patagonia so. Like, I think the story itself is very interesting and to be able to see like these two faces of the world at the same time because I'm traveling back and forth and doing one bit, one, like one harvest here and a couple of months later one harvest here. So it's like, it's, I think it's really exciting to be connected to both parts of the world and I don't know. <laughs> how, is it, how is it managing two humongous properties being so young? Being so young? Um, well, of course, it's a big challenge and I'm learning a lot, I mean, on the way. Um, but of course, I'm really lucky that I have a great team of people working with me. I, um, I work with two amazing winemakers, with Michelle Roland also, which is uh, my, like, my master and my teacher from, since the beginning. So I think that I, I'm very lucky that it's a journey that I share also with my family and even though I'm, I'm leading the thing and the projects and everything, it's, it's really important to build great teams, of course. And that's what really makes the difference at the end of the day. I'm curious about Michel Roland's um, the extended to, or rather his responsibilities in, in your wine. Does he come to Armenia often? Is it just a blending part? Does he still work in the viticulture aspect? And before, like, before, Julian, you answer that just for people that but that don't know Michel Roland's one of the most famous uh, consultants in the world. He's from Bordeaux, from Pomerol, if I believe right. Uh, people sometimes know him from the Mondovino documentary, or if you're in the world of wine, you know who he is. So, uh, like like Shireen says, we want to know how involved he is actually at the estate there at Carras. Well, he's very involved. Um, he comes to Armenia once a year, but then uh, we have someone from his team that comes twice a year. And of course, I'm talking to him, not every day, but very often. And uh, of course, he's available every time I need anything or every time we need to really like make a, an important decision in the vineyard or an important decision like throughout the production like uh, time. Um, so he's he's very involved and he's really 
like very um, strict, no, in some some way, like very and very efficient when it comes to giving advice and to to really like knowing which is the problem or asking the right questions to get to the end of the like of the problem and really um, get to a solution. So, I mean, every year is so different. Even of course we are learning every year, but every year in wine is so different from the other one. Like the the challenges are different and um, and of course we are always trying to improve and he's really really good at that like really like setting the the bar high and like being up to the like the standards so we are very lucky he's the, so, he's the best i want to know because we got into this a little bit in the live stream and before we had uh, some cutout is is people in wine know about him he's like a superstar he's <laughs> basically a wine making superstar. Yeah. Tell us a few funny stories that may be a sto maybe a stories that stand out that show, show the kind of person he is, something that pe people wouldn't really know about him. He's, his, his English is pretty good, right? If I remember, his English is pretty decent. He's what, sorry? His English, his English. Yeah, his English is very good. His Spanish is amazing because I think you know he has a winery here in Argentina, so his Spanish is perfect. Um he is very curious, very curious, even though like he's older now and he's um like his career it's he has a, like a very long career and he's been in the industry for so long and he knows so much, but he's still very, very curious. That's what I love about him. It's like every time like he gets exciting excited about things, no? And I think that's like very, very important in people. Uh, so he's very, very passionate and but at the same time he's very wise. No, so I think that I like for me, for example, like I'm younger and I'm really anxious. I want results to be quicker. And he once told me, like, well, Kuli, if you really want to make wines, good wines, great wines that people remember, you only need a hundred years time. So <laughs> it's like the best adv advice that anyone can tell you, like to slow down, like to really respect nature and to understand that wine is not about quick results but about like really respecting and, and waiting for results and looking for the right way and like going step by step excellent what, what about uh anything any other particular funny stories or anything like a real specific story that sticks out in your mind of any spe special me memory or moment that you had with them uh, let me see I don't know, I have so many, I, I've traveled with him a lot and he taught me so many things we, and we had a great time. Well, last time he was here in Buenos Aires, we went out for dinner, for example, the two of us together and it was like, besides any work schedule or anything, and we opened these two amazing bottles of wines and um, I don't know, he, I think he's just someone that it's really, really fun to, to spend time with, no? Uh, I'm always learning something new and I'm always like it's really funny also so it's really really fun like we laugh a lot every time we get together um, so let's move on to the red wine yeah so we have the the red wine for a tale of two mountains I really appreciate that it's Arani and Malbec but can you tell us why why is this black? so it's Malbec from Argentina oh I just I mean, the grape from <laughs> um, Argentina I mean, yeah, the grape is from Argentina. Of course, we grow it there in, in Ararat Valley. Um, so here it is. Yep. Um, we found that it's a great blend, uh, something that, that they really go well together. But it's also something that is very representative of us, no? as a family and our roots and where we come from and what we want to do. So like, we really wanted Areni to stand out and we thought that Malbec would be like a fun combination to blend with. And so this one is 60% Areni and 40% Malbec. I think you can really uh, feel the areni, but at the same time you have a little bit more like power from the Malbec, no? right. a little bit more mouth, a little bit more. You, you know like, what? I would, I was, I would be, I would be worried if you just tell me out of the blue, because we obviously know the grape areni. Uh, written a book about the region. We've, we've tasted lots of areni's. Areni's more medium-bodied, more juicy, 
uh, malt but can have a bit more fruit, lushness, more tannin. But I'm actually surprised that I feel like I can taste uh, some of the red raspberries, the strawberries, the, kind of get more of a of I can feel areni in the glass. Yeah, definitely. And it's very, I think it has like a lot of spices and something mineral and also like something more earthy. Um, so the character of the areni is very, very present in this one, I think. And the Malbec is mainly, like it gives a little bit more body, a little bit more, more structure and a little bit of tannins that the areni usually alone by itself, it doesn't have. So, but I think as, as it happens with the white, I think it's like a great wine to like introduce yourself into the like Armenian type of wines. Um, this is like, it has no oak, no, no nothing, it's just the fruit. So I think like it's very, very fresh, no? And very typical Areni and typical of course uh, Malbec from Armenia, even though that's a little bit more exotic. Um, but I think it's a great, great red blend. I mean, these are, these are just bistro wines. These are not just, but these are more, meant to be more affordable, everyday type wines, correct? Yeah, that, that's the idea. I mean, before this uh, Tale of Two Mountains, we didn't have any wines that were as affordable and as accessible as these. And our idea was to, like, we want to make wines for everyone, no? And, and the, our idea is to make everyone able to enjoy an Armenian bottle of wine, an Armenian glass of wine. So our idea, of course, we, we have different types of wines and different price levels and different type of products. Even like in our portfolio, we have wines that are very different from one another. And our idea is to really show like the full spectrum and, and the full um, like possibilities that that the Armenian land really like is able to offer. So this is one expression. And and you have been expanding your portfolio a lot. You have been introducing new wines every couple of years. I'm curious to know what is next. What are the new varieties you might introduce to your portfolio? Yeah, well, as I told you before, we've been really focusing in the Armenian varieties. Uh, so we have two new Areni coming. Uh, one that is going to be like, well, I don't know, for the ones that know, already know our portfolio, uh, on top of this, it, I would say, uh, we have two blends also, a white and a, and a red. And in that, um, next to that one, uh, we're going to have an areni. So it's an areni, like, it's also like pure areni, very fresh, no oak, uh, very straightforward, but like, clean areni and then we are going to have one like reserve areni which has a little bit of oak a little bit of um of armenian oak uh so it's going to be a little bit more structured a little bit more complex for those that want to go a little bit like to another level so i think those are the most exciting uh wines that we're going to to have in the future uh, and also we're going to have a, a pure chardonnay uh, oh. reserve chardonnay yeah, which I think it's going to be great also. Also, so, uh, uh, aged in big, like big Armenian oak that we okay. had to make only for us. So I think that's going to be very exciting. Somebody asked in the live chat if you were doing any, uh, like any wines in Karas. And I'm for like some of the producers are experimenting with an Armenian. Yeah, so um, we've been fermenting some of our wines um, mainly Areni and Sireni in Caras. Uh, we've been recovering these different Caras from like our neighbors and around the, the, the towns around the Ararat Valley. So by recovering these Caras that are really, really old, uh, we've been starting to ferment on those and we're getting to really good results. So we'll see. Okay. Are there people making new Caras right now? Um, there is, uh, there is someone making, it's, uh, like an, an old person that has been making caras for a long time. Uh, we bought some from him, but of course his, uh, production capacity is very, very small. Of course he's a, like an artisan. So we, we, for now we bought two from him, which are really good. So we're now taste, like testing, no? And seeing which, which is the best clay, which is the best, um, way of fermenting or of using the, the, 
the Caras, so we'll see. It's, a, it's I, an experiment. Shireen has a question, but I just want, before we get, does, uh, does Michel, does he hate, uh, does he hate all the experimentation wines and amphora? That type no, of, of course not. No, 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 no. We have a lot of fun with Michel uh, in Armenia. Really, he's like a, a really good advisor also when it comes to experimenting or research. So no, he's really happy to do it. Okay. A uh, question about, about the Armenian oak. How is Armenian oak different from French and American oak? In terms of flavor, how it impacts, how it affects the wine? Um, so I think that um, when it comes to Armenian oak, uh, it's sort of like in between American and French, something like that. Um, so it has this like herbal like um, aspect uh, as the French and but also um it's not as maybe it's a little bit more like rougher no it's not okay. as the as the french that it's usually more elegant but it's a little bit tougher so i we found that um bigger barrels are better when it comes to armenian oak uh and of course like very mild toasting well so, obviously big, there's no coopers right there's no coopers in armenia they're Taking the yes, there are. But there are no, some no, no, coopers. No, there, there, yeah, yeah, because you know, as the the brandy requires oh. um, different barrels, so the ones that we are using using are actually um, made for the for the brandy yes. industry. So. I love the part yeah, like where you touch on the point uh, you mentioned earlier that Michelle Roland is actually very open to trying different new things. I think the general misconception that a lot of people might have of him and his wine is he comes from Bordeaux, so he must come with a certain style, he must be baking. Yeah, but that's, that's crazy. I mean, well, I, know, I don't know. People will talk and people say whatever they want. Uh, but um, I hope you have the opportunity to really to get to know him sometime. You will see that he's like... He's this really, really charming person and he's really wise and he knows a lot and he's not like, he's very generous with knowledge, no? So he's um, very, like very eager to help and to share what, whatever it is that he knows and will help uh, in any situation. So well, I think that? he's the best. And he's also like very creative. It's not that he's only like making like with one recipe, one yeah. kind of wine. And I think that, that that one example of that is our own wines. Um, I mean, we have so many different like uh, personalities um, because we really respect the grapes and the varieties. So we try to really like focus on that, and he's really helpful with that. We have uh, some some questions about just Armenia in general. We we've, we've spent a lot of time. We spent probably we haven't been back in a while, but we spent a good. Uh, three months, two, no, it's probably two months, two months in Armenia in total and, and a couple of separate occasions. So we kind of have a vibe for what's going on. What's it like to mm -hmm. re, try to reintroduce wine culture to this place that it had, you have a long history of winemaking that was kind of lost during the Soviet times. And now uh, since the 2000s, you're trying to reintroduce this culture. Yeah. So I think that um, I don't know if I understood your question, but I think that like it happened a little bit like organically, you know? So we started making wine and the wine had a great impact in Armenia because it, it is really great and nobody really trusted that Armenian wine could be great. And so Armenian, like we Armenians are really proud of our products and our land and, uh, and Armenian things. So when Karas came out, uh, everyone was, was and they still are very excited to drink this wine that is like a son of our land. And uh, it's like, a, it's, people are really proud, no? So I think that with this pride, it like started to change the culture of wine drinking and of drinking as a whole, no? Because people started to, especially young people, started to not drink so much like brandy or cognac or like hard liquor but start start to really get themselves into the wine world which is amazing and it's much more i don't know i, I think it's really intriguing and it's so like we have so many things to to know and the wine culture in armenia and the wine history is so new at some point that like we are all very curious of what's what will come out next and i think people are really like engaged with that so it's great 
Okay, great. I'm very fully with you on that because I think it's not just uh, Armenia, but there's this is kind of like a global interest and curiosity towards finding out more about the history or the lesser known wine region. So it really opens up a space for countries like Armenia, the old, really, really old ancient wine countries to establish themselves right now. Anyway, I was going to talk about um, Michel Roland because I wanted to get, get back to, I wanted to um, ask you a question in line with that. You know, people come with a lot of misconception or a certain like prejudice or impression of people that's not true. So I can imagine for you as well, you know, for you to be working in Argentina and mm -hmm. in Yang and also bearing the family name of a very famous family. What do you think is some of the misconception people might have of you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I really don't know and I try not to focus on that because I, I don't know, it's not really nice to focus on that and I, I don't know, really I honestly don't know. Uh, what I know is that I try to really, like I work really, really hard and my family, like what we learned since we were little is that it's important to work hard and to really like dream big and to work for those dreams and I mean we we all work very hard and we try to make the best of whatever it is that we we are managing or that we are encountering so i don't know i think that's the only example that i'm interested in giving or the only image that i'm interested in, in like giving um i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Hey. That's, well, uh, a couple uh, before we before we let you go because you, you got stuff to do i know too uh, a couple big picture questions not just not just about karas but Armenian wine as a whole, how do you, I mean, I've seen the industry, obviously, we're there, it's been about five years ago now, and we went back a couple of years later, and already it was, there were vast improvements. What do you see going forward for the whole industry? Well, I think that um, what I see is a lot of interested, interesting um, new wines and a lot of interest in the wine industry and of consumers and of people that are like really eager to know wines are very interested in Armenian wines. And um, so I think that this, interesting, this interest is increasing a lot. And that shows in like in the market, in, in people that are like bloggers or uh, journalists or even like only like consumers that want to know something new want to know one like a new region of wine and Armenia is something so exciting like the story the history the the new wines are coming um, like it's there's so much to know about Armenia and that people like really are really inter interested to to like to get to know that history. So I think that in the in the next couple of years, um, there's so many things to come, like new wines, more more exposure, of course, and that's something that we are working on. Um, and thank you for like helping us with that. I think that people like you that are really like interested in this like new wine regions are so important for us because we we get some visibility that it's not really easy to get sometimes because. Uh, like now Armenia is something that people want to know, but maybe a couple of years when you started, like nobody was going to Armenia or nobody was visiting Armenia. So we are really grateful for that. So thank you. And so I think that new wines will come and we are doing a lot of research in Armenian varieties and in, in, in new varieties, not only the ones that we are already making wine with. So I think that there's a lot to come in the near future and I hope that people are like, connected with us to to try them do you are you happy uh well my last few questions are you happy with karas and also armenian wine in general with uh kind of the visibility the the awareness that the wines are getting around the world are you happy with yeah, that definitely i think that like we just started um I, that's my feeling like um as i said before like wine uh, requires so much time and also like to really get people to know what you're doing and to to get to know your wines that takes time I mean uh, even though uh, in the last couple of years there there has been a lot of awareness I think that there will be more in the near future and I hope so um, and I think that uh, that's one of my main goals like to make people really get to know Armenia through our wines I think that's very important for us are your wines available in Europe? Yes, yes. So we have, 
Yeah, wines in, in all over Europe and also in the US and in, well, in Russia and some places of Asia. So yeah, but in Europe, you can find it all over the place. Okay, we'll get information from you because we have a lot of readers and viewers from Europe. So it's so, good okay. to push them to try yeah. something in wine. Anything else that you want to say about uh, Caras? Uh, yeah, and you make wine in Patagonia, Armenian wine in general for uh, everybody listening? Yeah, I think that um, I hope everybody has the chance to to try our wines or any Armenian any Armenian wine. I think that all Armenian wines are so so different from wines from other places of the world. And our main goal is to really like create bridges around the world now. So from Armenia and from the world to Armenia. So we want people to come and visit us to come and and really get to know the story, to come and know the place. Um, we are lucky to share our wine and I, I have this feeling that like wine is like uh, a piece of land bottled, no? so it has the energy of the people, the energy of the place and I hope that everyone that tastes a glass of our wines really like can feel that. That's great, thank you so much. I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna give a little, you know, a shout out for our channel and everything guys. If you Want to know more about uh, Karas? I'll put the links in the description box. We have more about Armenian wines on our, on our pages, our book, Uncorking the Caucasus. So I hope you like it. Check out Karas. If you like the video, if you like this channel, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. We'll see you guys a little bit later.